We have established the conditions for longitudinal static stability and we know how to analyze the aircraft's stability based on uh, these conditions. Now let's talk about um, controlling the aircraft in longitudinal motion. Some aircrafts, uh, they are purposely built with negative static stability, meaning the aircraft is statically unstable, but the aircraft can be flown successfully by using flight control computer that constantly utilizing the longitudinal control surface to ensure the aircraft is stable uh, in flight. So the longitudinal uh, control surface is the elevator. Uh, the elevator is a flat portion on the horizontal tail. The control surface can sometimes also be located at the canard if the aircraft is designed with the canard. When the elevator is deflected upward, like this, uh, it creates a moment about the center of gravity, so it changes the total pitching moment coefficient of the airplane. Now let's talk about sign convention. Uh, remember that um, pitching upward is positive pitch, while pitching downward is negative pitch. For the elevator, we consider the elevator trailing edge um, deflected downward as positive, while the elevator's trailing edge deflected upward is considered uh, as negative elevator deflection. When the elevator is deflected upward, uh, the aircraft would pitch nose up. So, a negative, in this case, a negative elevator deflection, um, sorry, this one, a negative elevator deflection would create a positive pitching moment. Um, uh, the elevator control surface design is based on uh, these two parameters, the control effectiveness and the hinge moment. The control effectiveness is just a measure of how effective the control deflection is in producing the desired control moment, while the elevator hinge moment are the aerodynamic moment that must be overcome uh, to rotate that control surface. We'll elaborate more on this in the next slides. So, the elevator control power, um, it describes how the elevator design would influence the aircraft's pitching moment. Um, we call the elevator control power as uh, CM delta E. So it is the contribution from um, the elevator deflection towards our pitching moment coefficient. So the larger the value of CM delta E, the more effective the elevator is in creating a moment. Um, in our aircraft pitching moment coefficient here that we have derived from last time, we can add the term for the change in pitching moment caused by the elevator deflection. If we plot the CM versus alpha graph, we can see that the elevator deflection shifts the CM alpha curve. Note that the slope of these graphs do not change. What change is just the trim point, which the aircraft with different elevator deflection can be trimmed at different angle of attack. So if you want to change the aircraft's trim condition, for example, if you want to trim the aircraft at higher angle of attack, we can do so by um, finding out how much elevator deflection that is required to trim the aircraft at that angle of attack. Elevator effectiveness, um, CL delta E, describes the change in lift coefficient due to the elevator deflection. So we know that uh, if we deflect the elevator control surface, the aircraft's lift will change and its moment will change too. Uh, we can derive an equation um, for elevator control power and elevator effectiveness by computing the increment of moment or lift um, and relate our equation uh, with the horizontal tail's characteristic equation. Most of the terms um, in here, so these are, this is the equation for describing the elevator effectiveness and this is the equation for describing the elevator control power. Uh, just know that the derivatives of all this are in um, your textbook so you can look in your textbook for further details. Uh, most of the terms here can be obtained by um, the geometry characteristic of the aircraft's horizontal tail and the wing. 
uh, the, the term C, D, C, L, D, delta E of the horizontal tail here can be approximated by this equation where C, L, alpha, T is the lift curve slope um, contribution from the tail and tau is our flap effectiveness. Um, the flap effect effectiveness is, um, you can compute it by either using this graph or um, by using this equation. Um, it, it is based on uh, the size of the flap with respect to the size of the horizontal tail. So in short, uh, we know that the magnitude of the control effectiveness and uh, the control power can be determined by a proper selection of the tail volume ratio, the H right here, and the flap size. Now let's derive the equation that we can use to find the amount of elevator angle deflection required to get to a specific trim point. We know that the elevator deflection um, would shift the graph of the CM versus alpha. Uh, when the graph is shifted, the trim angle of attack also shifted. Uh, we also know that at trim, there, there's no force or moment acting at the aircraft center of gravity. So CM is equal to zero at trim point. If we set our CM equation to zero, if we try to obtain back uh, this uh, equation for describing our aircraft um, pitching moment coefficient, and we set that pitching moment coefficient to zero, then we get this equation that relates uh, the uh, amount of elevator deflection required uh, to get to specific um, trim angle of attack. Uh, sometimes we would want to define our trim condition by the lift coefficient CL. So we want to use CL trim instead of alpha trim. Um, if we want to use um, the trim lift coefficient in our equation instead of alpha trim, we can easily substitute that term in our elevator deflection equation. So we get this equation that relates our elevator deflection with the trim lift coefficient CL trim. We have talked about stick fixed neutral point uh, before and we have defined what it is. We have even derived the equation to compute the location of the neutral point. Here we'll, we'll talk about how to measure an aircraft's neutral point through its flight data instead of from the derived equation. And we can do this by flying the aircraft multiple times uh, with different center of gravity location and shift around its um, trim position uh, so we can obtain a series of flight test data of the elevator deflection required to trim the airplane at various trim points. Um, here's the example of a graph that is showing that flight experiment. So uh, this is an aircraft. Um, this is a graph of the aircraft flown at center of gravity about 10% of the mean aerodynamic cord and it has been flown at multiple um, trim condition, multiple de uh, delta trim and CL trim. And then it's been flown again with center of gravity located at about 20% mean aerodynamic cord. And that's the, all the trim points that's been recorded. And here it's been flown again at um, center of gravity shifted to about 30% um, of the mean aerodynamic cord and the same data as uh, obtained. And then the, the slope of each of these graphs are plotted again on uh, the slope D delta trim over DCL trim versus the center of gravity uh, graph. And then we can estimate the neutral point by extrapolating this graph. The neutral point is when the slope D delta over DCL is equal to zero. Now, why do we do this? And what does the slope of the elevator deflection versus the lift coefficient has to do with our neutral point? It can be explained by taking a look at our trim elevator equation right here that we have derived from the pre previous slide. And if we take the derivative uh, of this trim elevator deflection with respect to the lift coefficient, we get this equation. Uh, we can see that uh, in this equation, there's the M alpha term on the numerator. 
we know that state fixed neutral point is the position of the center of gravity when cm alpha equals to zero. So by this equation, it also implies that uh, when cm alpha is zero, d delta dc l term is also zero. So that is our neutral point. Let's just briefly talk about elevator hinge moment. Um, it is the moment that the pilot or the hydraulics must overcome to rotate the elevator. The equation for describing the hinge moment is described here. And it is a function of the angle of attack, the elevator deflection, and the tap angle. Um, it's uh, worth noting that it is difficult to predict um, these moments. And sometimes, or most of the times, wind tunnel tests would usually provide um, the best information for this.